I know the president would rather give speeches about our problems than resolve them, but he wasn't elected to talk about the United States. He was elected to lead it. Reasonable Republicans have been offered absolutely everything they've asked for. Still, they refuse to take yes for an answer, all because of a cadre of unreasonable Tea Party-driven House Republicans. Well, we're just getting word from our Capitol Hill producer, Chad Pergram, that on the House side, Speaker Boehner's people are telling him that they will have to rewrite the Boehner proposal because of, as of this hour, on this night, they do not have the votes to pass it in the House of Representatives. That's a breaking development right now. Uh, with that, we'll talk about what today's developments are and where this is heading with our panel. Susan, Susan Ferriccio, she's the chief congressional correspondent for the Washington Examiner. A.B. Stoddard, associate editor of The Hill, and syndicated columnist Charles Krauthammer. A.B., uh, with that news, we don't know more yet. If we get it in my ear, I'll bring it to you, but that's fairly significant. It is. Um, a, 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 someone who's a member who's very close with Boehner today told me we're going to have 217 Republicans, which is right now in the House all you need to pass it. We're going to pass it without Democrats. And I asked how they were going to get the holdouts over the line. He said, we're going to tell them that this is the best leverage we'll ever have. And this is a way to deny the president something that he wants. It's a way to avert default. And it's a way to avoid having to deal with Democrats and this is why you have to rally around and, and at this point their numbers are not there um, and they're not going to be able to to pass the bill in the form that they wanted and we don't know at this point if they're going to make they were going to throw a balanced budget amendment vote up on Thursday to assuage House conservatives we don't know at this point if they're going to make the bill more conservative or or more liberal they're gonna if they're going to be shopping for Democratic votes uh, it's going to be a new uh, a, a new plan altogether pretty much much uh, because the Democrats will make sure that it is and I think this is a this is I, I thought they'd take another 24 hours to admit this I thought they'd push it into Thursday but this is a really a sign that um, the members who refuse are dug in so the leverage Susan that's the question whether the house if they can't get that bill through and they have to stomach whatever is coming over from the Senate the leverage goes the other way Absolutely. And this is kind of predictable right now that they're trying to change the legislation to win votes. Now, if you remember during the government shutdown fight a few months ago, they knew they were going to get some Democrats. So they had more votes to play with. They can't do that this time because the Democrats in the House are pretty united against this. Everybody's really taking their side on it. So the Republicans have nothing to play with on the, in the vote area. So they really need to change the legislation so that it draws in more Republicans as opposed to find a way to moderate it to bring in more Democrats. If they don't pass something on their own by this weekend, then certainly the Republicans lose a lot of the leverage that they had even a week ago in this whole debate. And it's going to be looking like a bill that really caters more toward, toward the Democrats. Uh, I'm going to read a uh, statement from Boehner spokesman Michael Steele just coming in right now. Uh, quote, we're here to change Washington. No more smoke and mirrors. No more phantom cuts. We promise that we will cut spending more than we increase the debt limit with no tax hikes, and we will keep that promise. As we speak, congressional staff are looking at options to rewrite the legislation to meet our pledge. This is what we can what can happen when you have an actual plan and submit it for independent review, which the Democrats who run Washington have refused to do. He's referencing there the CBO, Congressional Budget Office, uh, came up with late tonight a uh, scoring on the Boehner bill and put that up if we could. CBO estimates the legislation would reduce budget deficits by about $1.1 trillion between 2012 and 2021. That's the first section of the Boehner proposal. The second part, which would be done by a joint committee, Charles, couldn't be scored because obviously you have to kind of hammer out what, what you're going to cut on entitlements. The Boehner proposal is a great achievement, and if the Republicans in the House, if the minority of them kill it, I think it will be suicidal. It, the, this is a moment of maximum leverage. The, this is a country where you cannot govern out of one house of the Congress. The, uh, the, the Democrats have control of the, the presidency and the Senate, and the Republicans have achieved a lot. In the Boehner proposal, you get only cuts, you get no tax hikes, you establish a new principle, never before, that a debt limit will be increased with a matching amount of spending cuts, that's an achievement, and you avoid the situation where if we end up not in default but in disarray next week 
the Republicans are going to share a lousy economy, a stagnant economy, high unemployment, which right now the president owns. And the prize is to win the election in November. The only way you're going to really change the structure of government, shrink the government, have limited government, is if you control the presidency in the Congress. That can only happen in November. If you go over a cliff now with the president and you get the blame as a Republican, all of that is out the window and you're forfeiting a chance of actually changing America next year. Susan, uh, just a couple more things here. A chat is hearing that from a good source that zero Democrats have signed on to the current proposal up there. And secondly, that the Boehner folks are very worried about putting a bill on the floor tomorrow and having it fail during a market session. We saw that with TARP when it affected the market uh, and that they would be fearful of having the bill on the floor and then yanking it off during a market session uh, concerned again about what happened with the TARP bill. It's a safe move for the Republicans right now. They don't have the votes for it. They're not, they should not put a, a bill on the floor that's either going to fail or that they're going to have to pull before the votes happen. That would be disastrous. The TARP situation where the, Dow, the, the stock market was dropping hundreds of points, that's in, fresh in the memories of many of the members up there. They really need to come up with a plan that can pass at this point in the House to have any leverage going into the weekend. That said, you know, you heard A.B. in this statement, the phantom cuts, the smoke and mirrors. This is what Republicans say about Senator Reid's plan. And so the chances of that passing in the House, probably nil. Right, but they, they share some um, provisions, and it's likely that in the end we see a compromise on, on um, some immediate appropriations cuts, uh, a dollar-for-dollar dollar match with a debt increase and spending cuts, uh, a commission, uh, which I think is a terrible idea, but everyone's rallying behind to one more time try to cut entitlements because this town is littered with the skeletons of failed commissions, as we know, and we have three of them piled up right now. Um, and then they would also include the Mitch McConnell Senate Minority Leader um, procedural gimmick provision, which is you get to get it, next time it's increased, you get to vote against it because it would require a two thirds refusal or disapproval by the Congress, a number you wouldn't reach, and that and that's then. That way, it's automatically increased. So, in the end, you can meld the Boehner and Reed plans, much as they're sticking to their own corners tonight. When we come back, I want to talk about what the press secretary said in this interview and what the president's position is as of tonight. More on the debt battle when we return.